everyone this is Chandan and welcome to Chandan Logics in this video I am going to share strategy to crack 50 out of 50 in your max paper and 50 out of 50 in your reasoning paper in SSC sigil examination why because many of our aspirants were preparing for SSC sigil examination while you are preparing just preparing for examination is not going to sufficient to crack your examination why because proper strategy proper planning is really important to crack your examination why because whenever you're going to do any sort of work not only writing an examination any sort of work so when you're having proper strategy and proper planning only then you can reach your success faster so I hope that if you're really a serious about your examination and if you're really eager to crack the examination then I'm hoping that this session is going to helpful for you so I have come up with proper analysis based upon the previous paper I have done proper analysis on that and I am coming across with a best strategy to crack 50 out of 50 in your arithmetic paper and 50 out of 50 in your reasoning paper okay so what we'll be looking is like first we'll be looking at your max paper what are the questions that are going to come how you need to solve those questions and I will be coming across with some smart ways of solving questions with respect to previous papers as well I will be solving some questions as well how you need to solve those questions in a smart way and how the questions are coming in examination okay so first we'll be looking at your max paper followed by reasoning paper okay so in your max paper now if you look generally what happens is like you'll be having two categories that is like you'll be having arithmetic followed by advanced math right or no so you'll be having arithmetic and advanced math as well so first I'm looking at advanced math so in your advanced math what happens is like you'll be having trigonometry so from trigonometry if you have observed previous papers you'll be getting three to two questions from trigonometry and trigonometry is like one of the important topic where you need to focus really more so if you're going to get something like three questions to two questions and even you can get good number of marks from trigonometry if you're writing your mains examination as well okay so from trigonometry you can expect something like three to two questions from trigonometry and next it's like algebra algebra also you're going to get something like three to two questions from algebra and next it's like mensuration geometry combined together mensuration geometry combined together it's like really important topic why because if you're writing something like mains examination then even then you can expect something like 15 to 25 questions from mensuration and geometry yes or no so mensuration and geometry prelims examination point of view you can expect something like four to five questions from mensuration geometry and next it's like number system you can expect something like one question from number system from simplification also they're asking like one question from simplification from certs and indices sometimes they're asking question and sometimes they're not asking the question okay so all together you can expect something like 12 marks or like something like 12 to 13 marks from your advanced math paper and already you know that now the examinations are going to be conducted by TCS that's like a new vendor so in the past it's like a different vendor now it's like a new vendor as TCS is conducting an examination you need to be ready for anything how the question is going to frame even no one knows that right so you need to be ready for everything okay so if you look at advanced math point of view you'll be getting something like 12 questions from advanced mac okay so next if you look at arithmetic point of view arithmetic point of view what happens is like sometimes from some particular topics you're getting the questions and sometimes there is like zero mark from the uh, from the topic as well it is dependent okay so but generally if you look from averages you're getting one question from time and work you're getting one question from time and distance you're getting one question and when we say time and work everything that is like a chain rule is going to be covered there pipes and system is going to be covered there so it can be from any part okay so will be getting one question and when we say time and distance trines is going to be covered there yes or no trines will be covered boats and streams will be covered hold all together you're going to get one question but if you're writing mains examination then the weightage may be different but as of prelims point of view, you can expect only one question from time and work one question from time and distance and from percentage as well you're going to get one question from percentage and one question from profit and loss as well simple interest compound interest you'll be getting one more question from simple interest compound interest and ratio proportion you're going to get one question so all this region you're going to get one 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 question each sometimes what happens is like you're getting zero questions as well sometimes there is no question from average sometimes there is no question from ratio proportions sometimes what happens is like two questions from profit and loss so simply speaking all these combined together it will be like one 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 maximum or sometimes it may be two as well okay but if it is like any of the topics is going to get two marks which means one other any of the topic will be excluded from here okay 
so from this it is like one 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 and one more very important one more very important region you need to focus is like data interpretation why because data interpretation in all the sets you're going to get four questions from data interpretation so whenever you're writing your prelims examination in all the examinations you'll be getting four questions from data interpretation and simply speaking if you need to be strong in your data interpretation you need to be strong in your percentages you need to be strong in average you need to be strong in ratio proportion if you're strong in all this if you need to be good at your calculation calculations as well if you're strong in all this region then what happens is like you can score good number of marks from data interpretation as well and scoring this four marks from data interpretation is like really simple once if you're strong in whatever the topics i have told you okay now if you observe here to score all these marks in a faster span of time why because getting the mark is not really important in what time you're going to get the mark it's really important which means you need to solve these questions much faster than your competitor only then you can be ahead of your competitor yes or no why because if you are going to solve one question for one minute of time it does not work in examination point of view yes or no why because you are going to get 25 questions if you need to attempt all the 100 questions why because you know that you have one hour of time that is like just 60 minutes of time and you will be having 100 questions in your examination out of that you have like max paper for 25 questions so if you need to score good number of marks you need to manage all sessions you need to manage all the four sessions if you need to manage all the four sessions only then you can score good number of marks which means you need to have really speed you need to be accurate as well if you need to maintain the speed and if you need to maintain your accuracy then the only thing you need to do is like you need to practice a lot if you are going to practice 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 you can score good number of marks in a shorter span of time then what to do for practice and from where to practice yes or no you may have all these doubts yes so i'll be showing you everything what to do and what not to do as well so what your strategy has to be is like first daily at least you need to read or you need to practice something like three to four hours daily it's like daily schedule you need to practice at least three to four hours of time why because if you're going to practice at least three to four hours of time regularly then you'll be in touch with these particular topics now what you will do is like many of the guys they will they will not follow it punctually so they will do for one two days and later they are going to leave it if they are going to do that in that way then what happens is like you may not be able to uh, solve these questions easily so what you need to do is like even if you're practicing for six months of time or one year of time or eight months of time whatever the duration you have your strategy your strategy has to be clear that is like daily three to four hours of time for max part okay and make sure that you learn the concept don't try to buy heart it okay make sure that you learn the concept why because once you learn the concept then solving the questions will be like simple so once if your concept is clear so after learning all the these things so you need to make sure that your concept is clear and don't try to buy heart it okay so make sure that the concept is clear why because if you look at SSC examination what happens is like 70 percent of the questions will be repeated questions and 30 percent of the questions they are going to create it new as a reason they are going to create it new you need to be innovative when you're going for examination why because examiner is expecting some smart way of thinking from you if the examiner is going to expect some smart way of thinking from you if you're not in a position to think then how you're going to be smarter so if you need to think means definitely you need to learn the concept when you're trying to learn the concept then what happens is like even when you're looking at a question even your mind starts working and even you're going to think in a smart way but what many of the guys do is like instead of thinking what they will do is like they'll start by hearting and don't don't and know this important point when you're starting by hearting there is a chance of forgetting why because when you start by hearting you can remember it maybe like for 10 days 15 days 20 days one month two months three months but if you're learning the concept it, it is going to be there for a long time yes or no that is the reason I suggest you to learn the concept don't try to buy heart it learn the concept once if you learn the concept then even if you're unable to know what actually the question is if you're strong in your concepts and if you're good at understanding the question then obviously you can crack any pattern of questions so that is the reason I suggest you guys to learn the concept and now you may have a doubt from where to prepare yes so what you'll simply do is like prepare from your previous papers why because from previous papers you'll be getting a clear idea what examiner is expecting from you you just follow the strategy whatever we have said and don't forget to practice all the previous papers 
try to write as many mock tests as possible take the analysis and if you're going to do that definitely you can get 50 out of 50 okay and don't forget whenever you're trying to write the examination time is really important make sure that your time slot is really really important why because time is an important factor in complete examination so make sure that you set some time and try to solve all the 25 questions in something like 20 minutes of time not more than the 20 minutes of time maybe initially if you're going to take more time it's not a problem but try to decrease the speed gradually try to decrease it when you're trying to decrease the time and if you're trying to increase the speed what happens is like obviously you can mark more number of questions so try to mark those 25 questions in something like 20 minutes of time so that what happens is like you can you can have good score overall yes or no that is the reason you need to get that speed if you need to get that speed means obviously you need to practice more number of mock tests so as i have suggested you take mock tests take analysis and try to improve your score day by day so that definitely you can score 50 out of 50 marks in your max paper okay so let us look at reasoning part okay so in reasoning also you'll be getting 25 questions even from reasoning you can score something like 50 out of 50 marks and as i hope that ssc reasoning is like really really simple why because you can say from where you're going to get questions as well why because always the questions will be frequently the questions will be like frequent questions so i am going to show from which topics they are going to ask you frequently so we'll be looking at them and i will be showing you like how to score 50 out of 50 from these particular topics as well okay so first i'll be showing you from where they're going to ask questions frequently so first part is like analogy so analogy you know that how analogy questions look like yes so from analogy you'll be getting two to three questions from analogy in every ssc pattern of examination analogy two to three questions classifications also two to three questions next numbered series you'll be getting two to three questions from numbered series from letter series also you're going to get two to three questions this region is like very very important for ssc examinations why because this region you can crack only through mock tests why because these questions how they are going to come even no one knows that why because these questions sometimes it will be like general questions sometimes it will be with respect to numbers sometimes it will be with respect to letters it may be like different different formats it's like only spontaneous reaction if you need to be ready with this then definitely this region is really favorite for examiner so you need to be good in this region as well and scoring the re this region marks is like really simple but you can do that with mock examinations okay next from coding and decoding you'll be getting one question from coding and decoding from blade relation you'll be getting one question from syllogisms you'll be getting one question from directions you'll be getting one question from ranking you'll be getting one question from all you'll be getting only one one question why because you have like 25 questions and mostly each will be like one 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 only you can't expect something like four questions three questions in like bank examination if it is like bank examinations they will give like three to four questions but ssc point of view they will give only one one question from each and every topic okay from dice you'll be getting one question and next non-verbal reasoning is one of the favorite region for ssc why because examiner's most favorite region in reasoning part is like non-verbal reasoning why because from non-verbal reasoning almost you'll be getting five question of pictorial representations so in that they will be asking questions from mirror images questions from water images questions from paper cutting questions from paper folding questions from embedded figures questions from counting figures questions from logical venn diagrams so all these things so these regions are like really important why because from non-verbal reasoning you can simply expect something like five questions sometimes you are going to get more than five questions as well so non-verbal is very important in reasoning point of view if you're writing ss examination so you need to cover all this region if you're uh, having something like non-verbal reasoning and next you'll be getting some miscellaneous questions as well miscellaneous questions the meaning is like sometimes you'll be getting questions based on symbols that is like five percentage three you'll be having symbol questions sometimes you'll be having matrix questions as well why because in ss examination you'll be getting questions based on matrix as well and sometimes ages questions and nowadays what happens is like if you have gone through previous papers now what they have done is like they have they have been asking questions from calendars they have been asking questions from cube they, are, they have been asking questions from clocks as well why because if you observe when it is like 50 questions in reasoning point of view in the previous years then what happens is like there would be one one question from each but later on when it is converted into 25 questions from many of the topics the questions have been not coming frequently as i have said you from calendars clocks from these particular topics 
topics the questions were not frequently but when you have observed the previous papers what happens like in previous papers sometimes you got clock as well sometimes you got cube as well so you need to be ready for everything but as i have suggested you this is the most important regions where you are supposed to focus if you focus these particular topics then definitely you can score good number of marks and to score good number of marks just knowing the topics name will not help you just knowing the topics names will not help you and as i have suggest you maybe like uh, learning all these topics is like really simple why because i think something like uh, if you're going to spend something like every day one hour of time or just something like 30 minutes of time if you're going to spend something like 30 minutes of time or one hour of time depending upon your knowledge i hope that just 15 days of time is sufficient to learn all these things not more more than that if you're going to spend something like at least 30 minutes or one hour depending upon your knowledge 30 minutes or one hour if you're going to spend on this one just 15 days just 15 days is sufficient to know all these things once if you think that if you're good at all these particular concepts in 15 days of time i suggest you to take mock test try to write at least try to write at least 10 minutes test try to write at least 10 minutes test every day try to take 10 minutes test every day take some random questions why because in reasoning point of view what happens is like these questions if you need to mark the thing is like you need to have a spontaneity if you need to have a spontaneity and if you need to score this in something like less span of time then obviously what you need like practice only through practice you can achieve it why because if you observe here these 25 questions in examination point of view you need to solve this in 12 minutes of time not more than that if you're going to spend something like 20 minutes or 25 minutes then it's like waste of your time so you, sh you should not do that keep your time something like 12 to 13 minutes not more than that 12 to 13 minutes why because you need to write the remaining sessions as well why because you have only 60 minutes of time and you are supposed to attempt 100 questions yes or no that is the reason you need to keep something like 12 minutes of time 12 minutes of time is more than enough so thing is like if you are going to reach this 12 minutes of time and if you are going to attempt this 25 questions if you need to do that means that can happen only through practice why because each and every mark is going to be counted when we are saying like uh, if you are going to reach your type 3 examination level type 3 examination if you need to be considered for type 3 then what happens is like your type 1 and type 2 marks both of them combined together will be for type 3 yes or no and anyway you know that now what happens is like tier 2 and tier 3 examination they are going to be conducted almost in a two days gap of time yes or no and whoever is qualifying tier 1 then obviously they have eligibility to write tier 2 examination and tier 3 examination as well but what the what is the important point is like your tier 3 paper has to be evaluated means the score whatever that was required after combining tier 1 and tier 2 examination if it is going to fulfill the eligibility criteria only then your tier 3 descriptive paper is going to be evaluated yes or no which means each and every mark is important as each and every mark is important if you need to get good score then what i mean is like in the limited time you need to you need to get more number of marks in the limited time if you need to get more number of marks means it is going to happen only through practice so what you'll do is like write as many mock tests as possible the reason for suggesting you to write mock tests is like to improve your speed why because anyone can mark the answer but in what span of time you have marked the answer it's really important even i can mark the answer you can mark the answer someone can mark the answer but the thing is like if i am going to mark something like 30 seconds of time and you are going to mark the same answer in 10 seconds of time then who is going to have more number of marks in the examination yes so definitely you are going to have more number of marks so that is reason what i suggest you is like improve your performance if you need to improve your performance then the only thing you need to do is like practice only practice makes you perfect nothing more than that if you're going to practice more then what happens is like obviously your speed is going to increase so what i suggest you is like complete the whole syllabus at least one hour or 30 minutes a day read at least 30 minutes a day or one hour a day complete the whole syllabus in just 15 days of time not more than that after 15 days of time once the syllabus is completed daily take at least 10 to 15 minutes of time mock test daily take 10 to 15 minutes of time mock test so write 
10 to 15 minutes of time reasoning test do daily do it the thing i ask you to do daily is like to improve your speed why because anyway the same questions are going to come in examination always the same questions the same question are going to come in the examination but if you are going to write it every day what happens is like your score your speed is going to increase there so what i suggest you is like if you need to get good score in a limited time why because good score in limited time is going to be valuable i got a good score but i am taking a long time which is like not really important in competitive examination yes or no so it is reason you need to get a good score in a limited time if you need to get a good score in limited time what you need to do is like write as many mock tests as possible if you are going to write as many mock tests as possible and definitely if you are going to do that then cracking 50 out of 15 your reasoning paper is like really really simple okay